without getting way deep into it, uh, when I was doing tech support for internet, I realized this stuff was a problem. And I quit using the, the routing function of In the modems okay. that, that, that the ISP would give you. Because I learned a little bit, which I could teach y'all right now, is that you use the modem function and you send over your external IP address to a router you bought and you let it manage your home network. When you let your internet service provider control your home network, that's when you are always indebted to them. You're reliant on their service for something you use every day. Okay. It's a little bit more geeky, but once you can get into the configuration menu of this device, it becomes easier and you start to understand what you're looking at. Okay. So, you have the, my next question is, you've been you're running that Netgear C600 for two and a half, maybe three years. I'm sorry, it wasn't the C600, it was the N600. N600. I can right. look that up later and throw some stuff up on the screen. Right. But the point is, I bet you the modem in that thing's working fine and the Wi-Fi is going out. That makes sense. Because when I plug it in, Ethernet cord seems like it works then. What what you can check is check how much you're paying. Do you know how much your speed you're paying for your from your ISP? I can make a call and find out. So you can find that out. So once you find out how much you're paying from your ISP, you hook up with the Ethernet cable to your motor. Right. And you run a line test. Right. Because then you can compare that to the line test of your Wi-Fi. And your Wi-Fi is never going to be as good as your Ethernet. Someday, maybe, depending on, depending on how many radio waves they want to radiate us with. <laughs> you know? That's a good point. But it's also a good way to be forwards compatible. You can keep using the modem and keep upgrading your, your router every three to five years. So basically, you hook up remember in my head how to do it just to configure this once you have a router you want you hook up your laptop to your modem with an ethernet cable you also hook up your router to the modem with an ethernet cable and then you access the configuration menu of the modem okay and you find it areas is firewall or demilitarized zone or dmz or shared ip it's named different all the time or you can just google it where do I find blah, 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 and whatever modem this is. And you find it, and you're going to look in there for the MAC address, like we were talking about, okay. of the router. Uh -huh. and sometimes it'll just show the name of the router. It'll say, like, neck here, and so even though it's So even though it's a combo, part of it is modem, part of it's router, and it is clearly defined when you know how to, how to dig into this actual device. So, yeah, so once you're in your, your modem, you tell it that third party router I got, I want you to give it the external IP address. Oh, okay. And then you turn off the Wi Fi in the modem. Then you move your Ethernet cable that your laptop's using over to your router and you set up the Wi Fi on it. Okay. Because you have to be, please, folks, don't be changing IP addresses or or Wi-Fi settings on your router unless you hooked in with an Ethernet cable. You don't want to kick yourself out. It's like changing the locks on your house while you're outside. Makes sense. Ch change them when you're on the inside. <laughs> these have a door to open. Oh, yeah, these have a door to open. The funny thing, and you tell me how this factors in, so I just got sick of having a call. Like it's the um, warranty had the service agreement had expired on the old modem. The, the N600. So I had to pay them, I want to say almost like a hundred bucks for them to update the firmware. You have to pay them to update the firmware? Yeah, yeah. once it's out of exp expiration. I mean, once the warranty. DWRT, anyone? You know what that is? No. Open source free firmware. Oh, well. <laughs> and that worked for a while. Like, I want to say seven or eight months, and then it started doing the same thing again where it would like. It would start blinking, and so the downstream would be working, but the upstream would be blinking. Like, it would never be a solid one. And then it got to a, to a point where literally it's hit and miss, to, and now it's to a point where I don't even expect it to work when I try to get it to All work. All this talking, I just realized something. Did you ever try to factory reset that modem? No, but I don't think it, 
If it has a factory reset on it, I haven't seen it. Let's we'll see if this one does. That one does have one. It's All like it a little a pinhole. A little pinhole. Right. So there's this other reset. If the factory reset doesn't work, and it works with most wireless devices or routing devices, it's where it's plugged in, it's on. You use a pen, hold it for 30 seconds. Unplug the power cable. So you unplug the power cable. Wait another 30 seconds. You're still holding this. Plug back in the power cable. You're still waiting. And you're still waiting another 30 seconds. So it's a total of 90 seconds. And then you let go. Hmm. I've only had to do that like three times in my life. But all three times it was able to like extend the life of my device until I replaced it. Like so what they'll tell what they told me to do on the phone was hold the power down for 10 seconds, unplug it for 10 seconds, plug it back in, and then hit power. None of that was reset button. Yeah, there was no, on, on the, I never saw one on that. On the other device, one? Right. So they would say, hold the power down for 10 seconds or hold it down for 30 seconds, unplug it, let it stay unplugged for 30 seconds, then plug it back in. That just sounds like, a hard reboot, not a hard reset. Maybe. Because a regular reset is just hitting the reset button for 30 seconds, and a hard reset is a 90 second thing I just described. Okay, this is just a quick pause to talk about my video content. I'm not monetized, I don't have any sponsors, but how the YouTube algorithm works is through engagement. So if you like this video, please click like. If you want to see more, please subscribe. And if you have something to say, please put it in the comments. Those are basically the three things that YouTube uses to push my video up to the people who are looking for that same type of content. Thanks. Now back to the uh, conversation. So as it stands, I have a house with no internet. Well, I'm back to using the old N600. It goes out in and out, in and out. Well, my next question is how many devices you got in the house that got to use internet? Well, every device, there's a, there's a Google Chromecast, I have two NVIDIA Shields, I have, my son has a tablet, my wife has a phone and a tablet, and a laptop, I have three phones, so it's total four and phones. a laptop. So I'm looking at here, a Chromecast, um... and a PlayStation 4. So one Chromecast, two laptops, two tablets, PS4, two shields, and four phones. Correct. So you're definitely going to want to want AC on your router. And what that's going to do for you is they have dual core or quad core chips. What's AC mean? Well, whenever there's a standard that's ratified for wireless, they come up with a, a name a for it, just name. like a DOCSIS. And that one says AC on the front. Yeah, but they're getting rid of the letters. Going, okay. Instead of going to AX, which is going to be the next one, they're going to call it Wi-Fi 6. Okay. it would be simpler. Yeah. But, but AC was the one where they took all these different ideas of using 5 gigahertz channel for some of the devices and 2.4 for the other. Okay. So you 5 gigahertz works really good on laptops and phones and things. But it's, it's got a faster speed, but shorter range. Oh. When you do set up your, your Wi-Fi, you want to give it a different name. And most people put, like, say, Harvey, family. My, yeah, mine said black Wi-Fi's matter. <laughs> black Wi-Fi's matter. Yeah. Hashtag whatever that is. <laughs> <laughs> so the other one, you want to put 5G at the end so that when you see it in your list, right. yes, the 5G. And then you put some of your devices on the 5G one and the rest on the 2.4. Okay. And there's less congestion in the traffic. Okay. Now, when the Wi-Fi 6 gets, you know, mature, okay, it's going to be even better with the traffic because it's going to see, okay, you're streaming. You need more priority. I'm going to give you more packets. What packets is is whatever you're downloading or uploading is broken into pieces and sent it, sent it to you in bursts. It's going to give you more priority of packets, and then somebody who's just web browsing or whatever. Or they've got, they're working in the cloud, say. 
right. they're going to get less priority. Nobody's going to experience a dip in the performance. It's actually going to look faster. Hmm. So I'm clearly going to take that back. What do I need to do next, sir? Get a router and... So keep my modem. So keep, you really don't... Modem. At this point, you don't think the modem is the problem. I would confirm it by hooking up an Ethernet cable and running a line test. And if I run that line test and it works, keep the modem. Even if it seems like they're, is, they're about to cease uh, support. support. I don't care. I support my own stuff. I, I, I don't enough. do like you do and call somebody 10 times. The only times I call somebody 10 times is because I know it's broke and I want a warranty replacement. And I, I'm, I'm like, okay, I have to put, the, put aside the rest of my night to convince three people because I have to ask for level two support. And then I have to ask for a supervisor. I said, look, I've already done all these things. So I literally started calling Netgear and Cable at 12.28 p.m. So that was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 phone calls between 12.30 and 8.38 p.m. So by the time I got to that last guy, I was, I, I was incensed at that point, understanding that it's not that guy's fault. I'm, I'm, our conversation was the first for him. But it was 21 calls later for me, and I still had the internet that wasn't working, and I bought three exact same modems, and no one could tell me what the problem was. You know, that's why I always use the modem the ISP gives me, because even though I might get somebody that's not trained, there's always somebody in that building they can ask. So what do you think about the idea of finding out which modems they have and they use, and just buying that modem? You can do that. One thing I would do, would do want to mention so everybody knows this, when you're using a router and a modem, and they both have Wi-Fi equipped, don't use the routing functionality of both of them, ever, because they're going to fight each other. You, you, unless you can use the, the Wi-Fi ability of the modem, let's say you want to use the Wi-Fi ability of your modem and extend the network, you can make a, use the router as an access point, or you're going to do like I described earlier with a DMZ. Okay. But the, what I'm a pragmatic, pragmatist, a pr pr pragmatist, pragmatist, pragmatist. Okay. Okay. Um, what this story needs is a clear pragmatist. <laughs> Red letter media tears me up, man. But I don't want to call support. I want to use whatever hardware that they had some sort of contract with. Use that modem. Because if I do have to call support, they're not going to be trying to hunt the internet just like I've been doing. Right. And now I have to wait some more. So, and yeah. then, and on top of that, I want to be in control of my network. So I'm going to put a router into my DMZ of the modem and say, okay, let the ISP control that side, and I'm going to control this side, but technically it's one side. It's all what they call layer two networking, because what most people don't know they're doing when they get a router is they get the layer one, which is your internet service provider's network, because they got their own router out there on the pole or wherever it is in a building down the street. Right. And then you got your modem, that's layer two. I keep it at layer two. That's what you're doing when you put your router in your DMZ. Okay. So first thing I need to do is go home and see if the ethernet cable works. If that works, that means the modem works. Yeah, but at that point, I know I, all I have to do next is go buy a router. Yep. All right. So I will check back in with you. Thank you for your uh, expertise, sir. And I will find out and when we meet again, I will tell you what's happening next.